What's going on guys? It's your boy C Lemons back again. And what I want to do is I'm going to go a little bit unscripted and um, I'm going to do a episode series where I kind of give you guys an idea of how to rank up fast in the Navy. The thing that you have to understand is each particular rate has a individual timeline and the average timeline displays how long it takes for each rank. But just because it's an individual timeline doesn't mean that you can't exceed that timeline because each timeline is on average and that's based off your your ladder and that's going to be the first topic of today's video i want you to follow along if you're new to the channel subscribe and like but i guarantee if you utilize these tips in this episode series you will rank up a lot faster than most and i can assure you that you'll be greatly ahead of your peers stay tuned and let's get it so we're gonna get straight to the point you know operation specialist i was always one in the military when i say i was as you may know i was it's past tense i just got out uh, this year in january but at the same time, I made OS1, E6 in four and a half years. Now, if you look at my ladder, which we're gonna start with, which is the learning and development roadmap. So easy way to get to your ladder. All you gotta do, you just Google. We can go back right here. You Google Navy ladder. You go right here and click where it says Navy cool ladder. And then it's gonna do a drop down so you can actually pick your rating. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick OS because that's what that's what I was, you know what I'm saying? Best rate in the Navy, you know what I'm saying? We can fight about it, but you know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna do all that um if you scroll down you can see the timeline so on the timeline it goes all the way from your e1 to e2 and on up so if you look at here it tells you your average time to advance so from ossn to ossa it's going to be nine months and then so on and so forth as you can see on my timeline it generally takes nine and a half years to make os1 so i did it in four and a half years so that shows you that i was able to exceed the average so the thing you want to do is you you never want to look at this as something that you aspire to be because the thing is and, and think about what i'm saying when you aspire to be this that means you aspire to be average and you're telling yourself that okay so os1 takes nine and a half years so i have plenty of time to get to os1 you should look at it from a standpoint of os1 is more money e6 is more money i'm trying to get to the bag as soon as possible so what you want to do is you want to look over here where it says typical career development path all right and then it's going to tell you everything that you need to know so it tells you the qualifications you need to have for each rank it tells you the schools or or the also the uh, commands or billets you need to take but what you want to do is you want to take the billet and the qualifications that best suit you me personally i didn't want to do anything that had to do with a lot of maintenance so i knew i never wanted to be a works in a suit but the thing is you have to complement what you don't want to do so if you know you don't want to do a particular collateral you have to fill that in with other collateral so what i did was i did training PO, I did career counselor. I did those things because those are great impacts on a sailor's career. And that was most important to me. You know, maintenance of things of that nature. Yes, it looks good on your eval, but how are you really impacting other sailors and how you develop developing your leadership skills? So if you look down here, you keep scrolling, you keep, keep scrolling. And I have to be fair. The ladder tells you everything you need to know about your career. Like this is a step-by-step -step guide on how to succeed. So if you don't succeed in the military, you can't blame anybody but yourself because because they give you a how-to guide. It's basically like, hey, look, all you gotta do is look at this to be successful and you'll be good. But I think what happens is along the way, a lot of times mentorship is not as good in some command. So you wanna make sure that you cling onto somebody who is doing well. You know, uniform is pressed, the uniform is clean, the boots are shining, things of that nature. And they give you the presentation that they're a sat sailor. If you need any type of other mentorship or whatnot, I do offer mentorship uh, via Patreon. So I can definitely help you to succeed and advance at a way faster rate to get to that money. Um, if you want to do that, just let me know um, comment section or anything like that. So if you scroll down here, it tells you everything that you need to do and everything that you need to work on. So I would advise that you print this out. You know, I, I, don't print out everything because I mean, it is a lot, but print the things you want to print out is you want to print out um, all this right here. So you can print out the school so you can see what schools that you could potentially um, apply for because you want to plan everything out down the road when if you're a e2 or e3 you don't look at qualifications that stand on an e2 or e3 you get those qualifications but you always try to look at where you want to be if you want to be e4 you need to look at e4 qualifications you know because you know you're going to get messenger to watch but st start looking towards petty officer to watch you know start looking at other qualifications that are ahead of you because the thing is when you think about where you're at you're never going to get to where you want to be and you're never going to get past your peers because you kind of got to look at it as 
as a competition type thing because the more and more you excel within your rating, the more and more you're gonna rank up faster and get better evals. Because at the end of the day, you wanna get the very best eval you can get. So let's let's just scroll down. Let's scroll down. We're gonna keep scrolling and then we're gonna look at where you get to your rate specific qual. So you wanna really print this out. So when you scroll through your ladder, you wanna print out where you have your rate specific quals. I mean, those rate specific quals are going to give you everything that you need to make sure that you succeed within your rating. So you wanna print out this one. You wanna get you a binder. You wanna put this as the first page in your binder. And then you wanna put, whenever you're scheduled to go to your ship, you put that for your report date. And then you wanna print out at least three in rate PQSs. Just so if you can, I would advise you, if you can get them before you get to the ship, get them and then print them out just so you can you know read through them. But if you can't get them, that's understandable. By the time you get to your ship, you should have a sponsor before you get to your ship. So if you can reach out to your sponsor, well, your sponsor is supposed to reach out to you. But if your sponsor reaches out to you, you already went through your ladder and you already know what calls that you want to get. So you can you can be like, you know, hey, sponsor, so-and-so, um, you mind sending me three PQSs just so I can, you know, run through them and, and, and email them to me. Now, they might give you the, you know, you know, just just wait until, you know, you get to the ship before you get the ball rolling or whatever, whatever. you know, you got to worry about other things like NDOC and stuff like that. And that's cool. But you always want to ask the question. You always want to ask and get a no instead of never asking and never knowing. So you always want to do that. And then you also can look at the race specific wall. So you see you see how OS is broken down like this? It's, it's based off the ship. So you want to look at the platform you're at. So if you know you're going to a DDG, then you look at the DDG platform because you already know what PQS is. Now, I was on a DDG right here. So you see it says right here, DDG and CG class ship. So you automatically know what PQS is that you need. Now, if you're going to a carrier or things of that nature, LSD, with amphibious ship, you can see that theirs could be different. So you, you want to make sure that you're looking at the right platform before you even print out the PQSs and just scroll through this. You know, you ain't got to read everything, but just scroll through it. Some catch your eye that you like and then be like, oh, okay, I, I like this. I like this. And then you can, you can see what US maps you need. You know, because US Maps will help on your eval. And you wanna work on those things as soon as you can because the more you do, the more you can show on your eval. Because you never wanna be that person where they give you uh, your brag, they be like, hey, hey, can you uh, give me your brag sheet? And then you give them your brag sheet and the thing is blank. And it's only blank because for one, you potentially have bad mentorship because your your mentorship or your leadership should have just set you up on the right path to make ensure, to ensure that that paper is filled with something, you know? You wanna have a education bullet you know that US maps can be an education bullet um, you can do your primary professional military education PPMEs or you can do your basic one but you always want to have something to fill your time now you, you take breaks take breaks but you always want to be doing something now if you get five signatures in one day you did something you, you are one percent better than you were yesterday so you always strive to be one percent better you don't have to complete everything in one day you don't have to complete a lot of things in one day but as long as you can put complete it one percent of something that you did and do yesterday you're showing progress so that's going to conclude today's video um if you like what you're hearing stick by and stand by for episode two like and subscribe for more content and as always stay tuned for some more military hacks